Hey everyone, so welcome to the video. So um, this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make a 3D text directly on Photoshop. And so an example we'll be making is this right here. I made this a while back, but you can still make this on Photoshop. You don't need any other programs or any plugins for Photoshop. It's directly on Photoshop. And I'll be showing you how to add on effects, etc. to make it look just as nice as this one. So I've been getting this video request a lot, honestly, because I incorporate 3D text into almost every design I make. And so people are like, how do you do that? And currently I still make it with Cinema 4D, but I understand that a lot of people can't get access to that. So I'm going to be showing you how to make it directly on Photoshop. So first step, we're going to type in the text that we want. We're going to make a new layer, go to the text tool, type in, let's just do 3D. Text. I'm going to keep it in all caps because I've noticed that for 3D text it usually looks better. I can set to any color for now. I'm just going to set it to black so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to scale that up. Control T. Place it in the center. So I've got a font that I like to use for 3D text. Any font works. I just recommend not using a font that's too thin because it won't show up that nicely. So let me just find my font. Layer 3D text, what we're gonna do is start applying the effects. So you're gonna double click this layer to open layer styles. We're gonna do a few things. First, what you could do, or should do really, is actually pick a color. So you don't actually have to do this layer styles. You can just change the text color by selecting all, Control A, changing it to what you want. We're gonna work with an orange. Make this quite saturated and vibrant because you can always change that later, but for now we want to be able to see the orange beyond the effects that we place. So once you've got that, you're going to double click the layer and then go to gradient overlay. And so we've got a few gradients to apply. The gradient that we're going to check is a black and white gradient. You should have it in your presets. We're going to click OK, and style linear. And for the scale, we're going to make sure it's above 100% so it fills it all up. And then this angle, you can choose it as whatever you like. I recommend not varying off too much from 90 degrees because let's say even 117 you can see a clear divide center of where the gradient is. So I'm going to have a bit of like a top. So where the white comes from is going to be your light source. So I'm going to have a bit of top left, like around 97 degrees, maybe a bit less, 94 works just fine. Boost the scale a bit so it covers it all. And then I'm going to set the blend mode to color dodge. You'll notice that it looks like there's light shining on it from the top left, but it's it's so bright. And you can notice there's three different colors. It's not what we want. So what we're going to do, slowly turn down the opacity, maybe scale it up all the way to 150 until it looks nice. That looks pretty neat. Then we're going to create another gradient. On this gradient, instead of the blend mode color dodge, we're going to go to multiply. So we're going to have some shadows. You'll notice that the bottom right be darker. You can change how dark with the opacity. Once you have that done, we are going to go to the inner glow. So in the inner glow, we're just going to add a small glow on the inside, just so it looks like there's a bit of like rim lighting. It gives a more 3D effect. So the blend mode you're going to select is once again color dodge because it'll be a light source. So for the choke, you're going to keep at zero. For the size, you're going to boost it up. Now I'm working at around, um, I'm working at 1920 by 1080 at 70 pixels per inch. So your numbers may vary, but the number I'm going to be using is 27, around 25 to 30, basically. I'm going to turn down the opacity a bit. You don't want this to be too noticeable, but you'll want it there. And you'll make sure that your color is white. Once you've done that, this is where we get to the 3D part. So you're gonna, this part requires a few keyboard shortcuts because otherwise it would take much too long. So a shortcut for the keyboard is that when you hold Alt and then move a layer, it'll duplicate it before you move and then you'll have two versions of that layer. Now if you hold Alt and then you make sure you're on the move tool and use the arrows, as you'll tell, it'll create a cool little 3D text effect which you will be able to create that 3D font out of. But as you noticed in my example, 
each letter was facing a different direction, which is why we've got to do this for each individual letter. So to do that, we're going to need to rasterize this. You could just copy and paste each letter into each font, but we're just going to rasterize it and cut it out because it will be a lot quicker. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the select tool right below the move tool. Select the letter or number, etc. Right click via la layer via cut. Now you've got this in a separate layer. We're going to do that for each layer, so I'm just going to speed this up. Alright, I'm done. So that went pretty quickly. Um, what I do recommend if you do have a lot of these layers now is to maybe num or rename them and show which layer they are. So for this, be 3D text. You can just double click the name to switch it quickly. And this is especially useful if you have uh, a long text, like a lot of characters, because otherwise you'll get lost in the layers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to what I was talking about. We're going to select the move tool. We're going to hold alt. And then we're going to use the keys to go into the direction that we want the 3D effect to be going um, out of. So to explain this, if I have the three selected and then they use the keys up and right interchangeably and do that long enough, you'll notice that I'll have 34 layers, which is a mess, but it'll be going up and right. And so I'm going to do that for each individual one. So I'm going to click on the D layer. I'm just going to have this one go up. I'm going to try to do it for the same amount. But you'll notice that when you're going in a single direction, it actually doesn't need as many layers to go the same distance. So I've got 34 layers here, but only 17 layers, and the D even looks like it's going farther. So I'm actually going to delete a few. Down no special order that these have to be going in. Keep in mind, you need to hold Alt while you're doing this. And then for the last one, we'll have it go left. left up. All right, now that you've got that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll to the top of all your layers. Now you'll notice that this says 3 copy 34, so that means that there are 35 copies of this. So there's 34 all the way down here. So what you're going to do is you're going to select the first one, the original one, scroll all the way up, and hold shift, which will select all the layers in between the selections that you make, and then select all but the top one, and then click Control E. This will merge all the layers. You're going to want to do this for every single letter that you have. So I'm just going to speed this up. Alright, so I just finished, and you're, if you look at the right, you're going to notice it's a bit hard to read which is which. So what we can do is create groups for these, so it can be a lot easier. So if we do select layers that we want and do control G we'll make a group so I'm just gonna do that for all of them and then I'm just gonna rename them real quick alright so that's much easier to read now that we've got each 3d effect applied what we're gonna have to do is give, make a, give it a bit of shading as well as align all of these. So to simply align, what we could do is we can bring up the rulers. So if the rulers don't show up, what you're gonna do is click Control and then R. Then as you can see, a bar comes down and you can align that way. So it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned, but if we do align it, it'll look a lot better. What you can do always is of course, rotate this which I actually am gonna do because I'll make it look a bit neater. I'll well, make sure they have the group selected because if you just try to click and drag let's select the top layer and that's not what you want. So if you let's say you want the X to be on top here you just move that up the selection of layers I want maybe this E to under this T. 
final T, I'll scale that up, move it over the X. There we go. Actually, for this X, make it smaller and then have be two T's sort of serve as a wall around them. I've got two T's, so I can't figure out which one it is. There we go. And then for this 3D, keep them both uniform, but I'll have it move over a bit like that. There we go. So now you can just drag this back, which you don't want to use anymore. For the E and the X, actually, I'll have it float in between two T's, just like that. There we go. So now there's a few steps that we have to apply to add a bit of the shading that I was talking about. First step is now you're going to want to open the groups that you made and select the bottom layer. So the bottom layer is everything but the front that you see in these characters, in these 3D characters. You want to go into adjustments. If you can't see it, just click windows and then go adjustments and I'll open it up for you. Then you want to go hue slash saturation and then lightness. Make sure that it's in between the front layer and on top of the back ones. And just go down by around negative 30, whichever works, whichever looks best to you. And then make sure that you create a clipping mask onto it so it only applies to the layer below. And so you can always just right click and then click create clipping mask or you can hold alt and click in between both layers and it'll apply. And so now that you've done that for three, I'm going to show you how to do it for D as well. So we're going to duplicate, put in between both layers, create clipping mass, and I'm going to do this for every single letter. All right, so now that we've done that, we can start applying the effects because at the most basic level, this is the 3D text that you wanted. But there's a few things that we can add for this to look more realistic or just a lot more cool. So one of these things that we can do is we can add an inner rim to all of this. So what we can do is we're going to double click the three here. Then we're going to go back to inner glow. We're not going to make it as much this time. So we're going to reduce the size a bit. Maybe keep the same opacity. But as you'll notice, there's an inner glow around all of it that makes it look just a tad bit more realistic, as if the light is sort of grabbing around the edges. So we're going to click OK, and then we're going to right-click this, copy the layer style, then click the top, then bottom group, and then while holding Shift, which will select all the groups, and then right-click, paste layer style, and it'll show up on all of them. If you don't like how it actually looks, you can always change it by just going to the first one. Maybe I want to raise the size a bit, lower the opacity, and then copy again, and then just redo everything, and I'll replace the old one with the new one. That looks a bit better in my opinion. So now that you've got that, um, that's basically it. I'm going to add a few effects. As we go on, I'm going to want uh, this T here to create a shadow on the E. I'm going to actually move that around right there so that this T, this T is a bit more aligned and bigger on this text. Maybe rotate it a bit actually. So then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate these T's and then actually since there's two of them, that's going to be confusing. So T1, we'll rename this to T2, there we go. We're going to duplicate the T, then click Control E to merge that whole layer into one. Duplicate this T. Click Control E to merge that entire layer to one. Double click it. Color overlay. Set it to black for both of them. Rasterize it. We're not really aiming for layer compression here or anything. And then blur. Gaussian blur. And what this will do is it will create a slight shadow. So actually, we're going to move this out with Control T. So you can see where we want the shadow. We want it to be on the X for this one. Then we're going to right click, 
and create the clipping mask over the X group so that it shows up just there. I'm filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Blur that a bit. Maybe reduce the opacity. Set it to multiply. There we go. And we're going to do that with the other one as well. Create the clipping mask. Oh, not for that one. I made it to the T. Make sure that's above the right group. This one's going to be over the E one. Create the clipping mask. Blur. I'm going to just keep it at the same value. We'll reduce the opacity a bit so you see it fit. And for this 3D, I'm actually going to move it a bit closer. Make it smaller. And I'm actually select all of these. Make it fit my screen size here. So, now that we've got that, I'm going to apply a few more effects to make it seem more realistic. For this, for these effects, I'm just going to... You're going to want your composition to be right at this step because these effects, once you move things around, unless you do it for each individual letter, it's going to mess up the composition. So, I'm going to hold uh, shift, select top and bottom, group it all into one, duplicate, control E. Now we've got it all in one layer. And then I'm going to go into filter, filter gallery, I'm going to go into sketch, chrome, I'm going to play around with these settings with whatever I find fits best. And actually, my apologies, what you're going to do is actually, oh no, we've been doing it right. <laughs> Back to filter gallery, silly me, sketch, chrome. I'm going to play around with this for whatever seems best. I'm just going to do detail 0, smoothness 10. And then you've got this chrome look that we're going to apply over the text. So we're just going to go and select the layer style. We're going to go from normal to overlay. Then you're going to want to make sure that the layer behind is showing. And now we've got a chrome effect on it. So as, you, as you can notice, it's a bit too obvious. It's not always like correct, so we're going to actually lower the opacity a bit. And then we're going to select the eraser tool on the left side. Create a soft brush. This size is good. And then turn the opacity down by, uh, to around 20%. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to brush over the areas that we don't like. Thin strokes, make sure to click every time so that it can re-erase if you don't want to do it more than a 20%. Don't be scared to be aggressive with this. If you don't like it, just take it away. That looks pretty good. Adds a bit of shine, gives it more of a 3D sense. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that group again. Control E once again. Put this layer on top. We're going to go back to the filter gallery. Then we're going to go into Stylize Glowing Edges. This is going to give our whole text some, well, some glowing edges, simply. So we're going to raise that width, maybe lower that brightness so it just shows up on the edges. And possibly smooth that out. It doesn't have to be perfect. The more it is, the better it will look. There we go, that looks fine. You just want to play around with the settings with, to see whichever looks best. We're going to select a layer style from normal to overlay once again. And as you're going to see, it is it's very aggressive. <laughs> it darkens a lot, adds a few like texture lines. Personally, I don't like it. So what we're going to do, once again, is do the same technique. We're going to lower the opacity a bit for it to look decent overall. And then we're going to grab that eraser brush just delete what we don't like. Maybe work with a smaller brush to get in those details. It tends to add in colors, like in the darker areas, add it in some greens. I don't like that. Remove that. Your final goal is to try to keep those lines right there. Because that gives a really cool effect. I'm just going to remove whatever you don't want. It depends on every piece. There's no clear thing of what you want to remove. It's just whichever is most pleasing to your eye. So, now that you've got this, 
you could add on more there are a lot more effects to add on personally I think this looks pretty good I personally would add on a bit more but if you placed this into I don't know into an image and made it look like it was floating or placed into a design it would fit in pretty well so I do hope you guys enjoyed this I'm going to further edit this so I can make a thumbnail out of it and use it for this video but if you guys do want to watch more videos on how I further edit this maybe or just any other design videos make sure to check out my channel check out my videos and if you did like this video give it a like and consider subscribing and I wish you all have a nice day Thank you for watching.